out of the ordinary insights. Brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. At Lloyd's of London. Richard Ward has recently seen the organization return to profit after a merciless period gripped by natural disasters. Ward chats to CNBC Africa's Bronwyn Nielsen in this week's Captains of Industry. You're watching Captains of Industry here on CNBC Africa. I'm speaking to Dr. Richard Ward, the CEO of Lloyd's. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. You took over at the helm in 2006. Mm. Now, the world is a very different place, 2006 to 2013. What has been the biggest change in, in your book? I think there are probably two things. I mean, firstly, the global financial crisis. You can't ignore the impact that's had on the business community in 2008. But for Lloyd's, the second thing is all the major catastrophes we've had to deal with, particularly those in 2011, which was the costless year on record for the uh, Lloyd's market and actually the second cost this year on record for the insurance industry. So we've had to deal with both a global financial crisis and major catastrophe losses coming through in the market. But the, the good news for us though is we've been able to build our financial strength throughout that period. Does that turmoil translate into sleepless nights for you? It doesn't translate into sleepless nights but it certainly makes us think very long and hard about the business we're in. And it certainly makes us think very long and hard about the capital that we need to support the business to pay out the policyholders. So the financial crisis had a major impact on asset valuations, on people's investment strategies. And so we had to rethink how we manage our assets because we've got over 50 billion pounds worth of assets there to pay for policyholder claims when they come through. But then the major catastrophes of 2011 were a reminder of the risk of the business that we're in, what we're there to do, pay policyholders again. So we've had to continually look at our capital position to make sure that we are financially sound, which we absolutely are, that we've built our financial strength throughout that period, which we have done, so that we can meet the claims of policyholders. And of course the, the regulatory environment has changed dramatically. Is that now an impediment mm -hmm. to the enabling environment? Regulation is a challenge. Uh, we're in a regulated business. Uh, regula good regulation is good for business. Over-regulation is bad for business. And you're absolutely right. Yes, the regulatory environment has changed. Are we, we in a situation of over-regulation now? I think we run that risk. I wouldn't say we're there yet, um, but I do worry about the actions of regulators. I'm not talking primarily about the UK regulator, but about global regulators, because we are a global business. So we have to deal with regulators here in South Africa, we have to deal with regulators in China, we have to deal with regulators in the US. And so we're continually having to deal with the issues that the global financial crisis has thrown up that regulators are now trying to get to grips with. And the challenge for us as an insurance business is that the global financial crisis was caused by the banking sector. So the regulators are responding to that but then we get a bit of leakage over into the insurance sector because we get swept up in it. So my job as CEO is to make sure that we don't get too much leakage into the insurance sector. And how, do you, how do you push back on the regulators? Through a structured argument and debate. Um, I mean, the regulators respond to a well-thought-out argument. So at the moment, at the global level, we're having a discussion around GCFEs, Globally Systemic Important Financial Institutions, and whether any of the insurance industry should be captured by that. And so I sit on the board of the Geneva Association, which is this global think tank. Um, around the insurance industry? Uh, among the insurance industry, yes, that are actually working with the IAIS, the insurance sorry, the International Association of Insurance Supervisors, that are advising the FSB, the Financial Stability Board, on how insurance and reinsurance should be treated within this GCFE framework. Our view, and of course we would say this because of our business model, is that insurance, the business of insurance does not pose any systemic risk to the financial system, the business of insurance. Let's chat now about the economic environment specifically in the yeah. United Kingdom. Is that an impediment to your continued growth, being based in an environment where the news flow, let's be honest, is not exactly exciting or stimulating in terms of growth prospects going forward. <laughs> no, no. I put it the, politely. You, you have put it very politely. In the UK, is a challenging environment at the moment, and of course there's a, a discussion around you know, whether we're going back into recession or not. So growth is, uh, is, uh, is not, not there in the UK, and that's the challenge for the government and for business in the UK. Do you think you're going back into recession? If the UK is going back into recession, I'll wait to see the economic data come out and then 
just it will be what it is. But I think from a Lloyd's perspective, whilst we're a business based in London, we are an international business. So if I look at where our business comes from, 40% of it comes from North America. Only 20% comes from the UK. And 12% so from emerging markets. 12% from emerging markets and 5% from the rest of the world, which does include Africa in that. So we are a UK business sourcing 80% of its business flows from outside the UK. So you can't be tainted by the U UK economy is what you're telling me. We can't be tainted by the UK economy. What we are tainted by is the global economy. So if there's any slowdown in the global economy, then that Im impacts the businesses that we insure. And my, my challenge is to help business understand that insurance is not a discretionary spend. Because when times are tough and profits are getting squeezed and everyone focuses on costs, they start to think of insurance as some discretionary spend you don't have to buy. Well, my view is it is not, because when times get tough, that is when you need insurance. So I have to get out there and meet the business community, particularly in these economies where they are suffering from lack of growth, and say, don't forget risk management. That's a very important part of your business. You've spoken about your geographic penetration or mm. geographic diversity. Mm. So I'm going to use you as a barometer mm. of what is happening on the ground out there. You mentioned your exposure to, to North America. Mm. News flow on the ground. Uh, I mean, the North America is an interesting market. I mean, they've had some major catastrophes recently, particularly with Superstorm Sandy, that reminds people and reminds business why they need insurance. So irrespective of what's happening in the economy, there is still a need to protect your assets. After a catastrophe, do you yeah. see a flurry of activity in terms of people being reminded of the fact that they need to insure? Do you see, can, you, can you measure that? Generally, yes, you do see increased activity, but it all comes down to human psychology. So some people think if a disaster has happened, it won't happen again. Others think if a disaster has happened, it will happen again. So it depends on what you're actually dealing with, but particularly in the US and the North American market where they are used to buying insurance. I mean, there's very high insurance penetration in the US and they understand how it can be used to manage risk. In the aftermath of a catastrophe, it's a strong reminder of the importance of insurance and therefore you do see increased interest in how you can protect your assets. And what Superstorm Sandy, for instance, demonstrated is how little cover people had against flood up in um, the eastern seaboard. So it's a reminder that you actually need to buy flood insurance to protect your assets if you're living close to the coastline. Things like that. Vision 25 uh, yeah. was stated in, in 2012 from, from your perspective and that's just looking at your exposure to emerging markets we mentioned mm. sitting at around 12 percent. You want to grow that aggressively and your yeah. stated markets of intent China, Brazil, Mexico, Turkey, mm. uh, India. Yes. How are you going to execute on that vision? Well, firstly, you said we want to grow aggressively. No, we don't. We want to grow profitably and sustainably. The, uh, I stand corrected. The challenge for insurance is to grow in a way in which you've got sustainable, profitable business. If you grow aggressively, you end up losing money. Now, the reason we came out with Vision 2025 is that we recognise what's happening in the global economy and that we as a business need to respond to that. So today, or sorry, last year, 2012, the developed world accounted for roughly 70% of the global GDP. You fast forward to 2030, and the forecast is that the developing world will account for 70% of the world's GDP. That is a phenomenal shift in economic activity. And we as a business need to respond to that. So today, but there's risk inherent in responding to of the emerging market. Which is why we have to respond in a profitable, sustainable manner. But today, Lloyd's is seen as the global market for specialist insurance and reinsurance. We want to be seen as that in 2013, 2025. So if we're still to be the market of choice for specialist insurance and reinsurance, we will need to get business from these emerging markets because they will dominate the global economy. So to China today is the world's second largest economy. By 2030, it will be number one. So for us what is your strategy, without giving away any competitive uh, secrets, for, for a market like China, which is very, very diff different to yeah. your traditional markets? Very challenging for us in China, but what we have done is we've established an operation in Shanghai, an insurance company and reinsurance company. We put that in place back in 2006, and we're starting to develop the relationships with the local insurers, the very large companies such as PICC, CPIC, 
Pinghang, we're starting to develop relationships with the insurance sector, we're starting to develop relationships with the business community. So over time, as insurance penetration increases in China, we are able to offer the specialisms that we have that will help those businesses manage their risk. So today, general insurance, the sector that we operate in, is not that large in China. Most of the insurance is in personal lines, motor and home ownership. But as the economy develops, as you see a growth in middle classes, as you see increase in economic activity, people want to protect their business and they'll look to Lloyds to help them. You mentioned Ping An, and yeah. while you're here, will you be meeting with Adrian Gore, Discovery mm. Health, and obviously their JV with Ping An in yeah. that uh, Chinese environment. Any linkage there? For, for us, no. I mean, Ping An is, is a major insurer in the Chinese market, and they will have risks that they will want to offlay into the international reinsurance markets. And so that is something we're discussing with all the insurance companies in China, is how can we help them manage some of their risk by taking it on board ourselves. Your reception when it comes to Africa, mm. how are you finding the African environment? And you know, are you setting up a base, South Africa, regional into East, West Africa? Well, we've been in South Africa for quite, quite some time. We have an operation here in Johannesburg. Um, our rep has been here, I think, for about 15 years, actually. So, but we've been operating for longer than that in the South African market. And it is a very important market for us. It's our largest market in Africa. There's still growth here, which is great. So you've got 3% forecast GDP growth. Not as great as the whole of sub-Saharan Africa, which I think is forecast to be 6%. So it'd be nice to see more growth in the South African We'll market. be lucky to get 3%. I think it keeps being revised downwards. 2.5% well, seems to be tabled at the moment. Just, just anything would be great. I mean, I come from the UK. <laughs> we'd, take, Absolutely. we'd take anything By above zero. and we look fantastic. You, you, you do. So, you know, uh, what we need to do is work with the business community here, particularly given all the infrastructure projects that are being undertaken in, in South Africa on the transportation, you know, high-speed rail, um, road networks, bridges, dams, power generation, those are sort of areas where we have specialisms that can help people manage those risks. So the challenge for us is to work with the business community here to help both parties understand what we need to do to be able to help businesses manage risk more effectively here in South Africa.